Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the lead series. I'm your host for the day, Thomas Ayuaki, and thank you for creating time for joining us in this wonderful episode. Now, uh, the objective today is to cover how women and youth can be able to bridge the digital skilling gap uh, over the next few years or so, because as I'm sure you are aware, we face a very, very big deficit when it comes to an unemployment due to the fact that some of the skills that have been impacted do not necessarily speak to what the market needs right now. So to help me have this discussion today are two illustrious guests who have a lot of experience within the ICT for development space and are very eager to share their insight and knowledge on the same. So if I can start here, kindly introduce yourself and then we can go into Okay, thank, thank you, Tom. Um, my name is Cass Trombidi, and uh, I'm, I'm a digital health and monitoring intern at Population Services International. And uh, at the same time, I, I am a software engineer, um, as well as a marketing engineer uh, with a US-based company called LD Talent. And I'm also a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador at, at Microsoft. Um, uh, thank you, Tom, for having me. I am Ignatius Ouma. And it's a pleasure to have you back with us. Uh, we've interacted from time to time, and it's a pleasure that you're going to just get to understand this uh, topic of bridging the digital gap uh, in the in the in the digital space. Uh, just for us understanding the key areas on how we can help both young women and youth to get the key skills that are required for the day. So before we kick on to uh, the topic of the day. I just wanted to check uh, with the panelists here about uh, how the year has been for them and uh, where you are at in terms of energy levels, because I know it's been a stressful eight to 10 months or so. And uh, I know you guys have achieved a lot in your different capacities. So um, can you just share with us where you are uh, in terms of uh, some of the things that you've done in this year and uh, you know what you're looking forward to as we close out and prepare for 2024? Yeah. Uh, so maybe if I just go first and uh, basically I'll uh, pin most of the activities because Tom, uh, we've engaged uh, from time to time in this space because uh, for me, I've focused uh, and I've achieved uh, developing various platforms and one of them was uh, developing that platform with uh, Agra which uh, now many youths are using it uh, across Africa in learning various uh, skills, uh, both on basic, mm -hmm. uh, digital, basic digital skills, intermediate, and also farmers are using the, that platform to interact. Mm -hmm. I've also been uh, out in Lake Ipia, uh, also just helping with uh, a, a given project uh, that is uh, digital skills for agriculture that was very pertinent for us, uh, that we wanted to see how well it falls in place uh, and how farmers are getting impacted or are utilizing uh, the skills we've given to them. So. Uh, visualizing next year, I'm also just envisioning seeing more uh, activities, but I want to put my energy on the tech space because I really uh, uh, enjoy seeing different uh, technology development and how they are being used by different people in the society to help themselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm. So, Castro, it seems like you do a lot from your introduction. So, uh, what are some of the things that stand out to you uh, going into 2024? And uh, where is your energy bar now with the remaining weeks that we have? Uh, okay, uh, for me, I can say um, one of the greatest achievements that um, I can say I've made this year is, uh, you, Tom, um, you know that I've been, uh, I've been having so much passion towards tech since mm -hmm. even when I was with you guys, uh, that's yeah. more than five years ago. Yeah. And um, I've been learning um, just on my own, so some skills here and there, some languages. Mm -hmm. And um, it's something that seemed that, that, seemed that uh, could have taken like forever or the longest time. Mm -hmm. But this year, um, the effort that I've been making um, for quite some time has uh, at least given me something. Mm -hmm. And Tom, you also remember there was a time I was sharing with you um, some hackathons that you were doing yeah, uh, with yeah. students. And yeah. that, that was uh, around, I think, Feb or March. Mm -hmm. So after the hackathon, um, as someone who has been doing freelance business for, for quite some time mm -hmm. uh, on Upwork, mm -hmm. I've always um, wanted to work um, in an office setting. And after the hackathon, that's when um, 
some of us um, from the hackathon were picked by Microsoft and then um, we managed to do some interviews uh, with Population Services International. As you understand, we are doing something to do with the um, healthcare, solving yeah, yeah. um, health related problems in Africa. Mm -hmm. So yes, after the interviews, I was lucky to be among us um, um, the four guys who were picked to um, do a six month internship with the uh, Population Services International. And um, it's a great thing for me since, um, like I mentioned, I've never been in an office setting mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I've always been um, like having that uh, fascinated, like I've always be, been fascinated um, mm -hmm. to work in an office setting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, th that is one uh, great achievement that I can say, um, yes, mm -hmm. I've achieved uh, this year. So you, you talked about the eight to five environment. Now that uh, this is which month you are in which month now? Of um, the internship? This is my sixth month um, in the internship. Yeah. Yes. So it's been five months of you working uh, an eight five, to five job. Five, five and a uh, half, yeah. Mm. So how, how has it been? For some of us who've been in the space for like uh, 10 years or so, uh, <laughs> we're kind of used to the space already. But for you, first five months, eight to five, how does it feel? Um, first, first things first, I can say, um, for me, I can say it's amazing mm -hmm. because um, we, we don't do five days at PSI, oh, like okay. it's hybrid. Okay. So you're given at least some days in the office and then other days you work from home. Mm -hmm. But I can say it's something that is amazing because I'm working with a team that is working towards achieving the same goal and mm -hmm. they have a, a, a mission that we all can relate to yeah. and we all want to work towards achieving whatever um, they have said for us to achieve. So Castro, you've uh, really mentioned a lot about what you put your hands into, your mind. And personally, I can say we've interacted from time to time. Uh, there's a mentorship meeting we had at uh, SPU and it was very vibrant. I really liked how we molded the young people there. And um, just to get some gist on what you really do. So Tell us about, uh, can you just give us some insight about your work? Uh, because we, if we can break it down, we've seen you put your hand in so many things. So yeah. what is it about your work and what do you like about it? And basically in all of these areas, which one particularly do you feel like ah, this I can hold and run with? This is now the thing that you that you want. Yeah, because I'll be very honest. Again, mm -hmm. I keep going back to the introduction. It's, it's there are like three or four roles there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so one would ask how, okay how does he spend his eight to five ah, yeah so yeah, how, yeah. how do you manage those different mm -hmm. workflows and uh what has specifically picked your interest moving uh moving forward you've talked of software engineering but maybe mm -hmm. just expound mm -hmm. on that a little okay uh, let's start with the the internship mm -hmm. um I mentioned that it's hybrid, but that doesn't mean that you you you, you don't work five days. Of course, you work five days in a yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. So Monday to Friday, um, my schedule is always very busy. And Tom, you know that because yeah, yeah. if you try to book an appointment with me, it's usually a week in advance. Yes. Yeah. So Monday to Friday, um, uh, morning to evening, I'm working uh, for PSI because it's an internship, mm -hmm. and then at night, I'm working for LD Talent, and um, we built a product, mm -hmm. I think that was last year, and uh, part of this year, I think January, mm -hmm. uh, Feb, and March. Mm -hmm. And the product that we built was um, for automating um, marketing with LD Talent. Mm -hmm. So mostly what I do is um, we have a bot that aut automates our marketing. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm the person who is responsible for like monitoring and observing how it's doing its work. And in mm -hmm. case there is, uh, like it fails, mm -hmm. um, as a software engineer, I have to go back to the code and try mm -hmm. to uh, troubleshoot whether if, if there's a bug, at least ensure mm -hmm. that that is not 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 making our work slow down. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not just a bot, a normal bot. Mm -hmm. We have done so much with that bot; like it mm -hmm. it, it it already has AI features in it. Oh. We normally rely on uh, OpenAI's uh, API mm -hmm. um, to make it do effective work. Yeah. And yeah, so at night. I'm normally monitoring the board to ensure mm. that it's marketing and it's doing its work well. Yeah. yeah. And then some, um, just a few um, uh, software engineering related activities. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you understand, um, things have changed. Um, mm. We normally work with hours, like each activity you do, you track your hour. Mm. Um, if it's marketing, it's a one day work session. If it's software engineering, you are paid um, on the hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then with the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador uh, program, this is something that I've done for quite some time since mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. And that one, I can say I do it like part-time 
Oh, if, okay, if, yeah. if if there is a student ambassador was joined the, the the community and they they want to do some onboarding because you understand that um some of the guys who join these programs um novice or new to coding yeah, yeah so yeah, you are yeah. required to do some technical onboarding and it has a lot like you need to clone some project on github you need to deploy it on azure you need to do a lot of stuff and then you are new to that um uh to that what do i call it you're new to that en- en- environment not environment i can say you're new to that tech stack mm-hmm. you're new to that tech stack mm-hmm. so you need someone to hold your hand just like mentorship mm-hmm. so i normally like pick the guys who have recently joined and then i take them through the onboarding process mm-hmm. and then show them the way and then at the same time there are guys who have not joined you have to look for guys who have a passion um, for tech and then mm-hmm. you show them the application process and mm-hmm. then after they join you hold their hand um to the last because we have milestones you have mm-hmm. alpha beta we have mm-hmm. gold yeah so you have to pick them from alpha alpha you join you do a learning path after that you do you, uh, for, for for alpha mm-hmm. i think before you uh you become alpha you need to do your technical boarding yeah. and also you do some uh i think learning path mm-hmm. and then after you do that you you upgrade to alpha mm-hmm. then for you to go to beta um you need to do an event a tech event and mm-hmm. then invite students from within your uh, university or within the community in Kenya or mm-hmm. even the world at large mm-hmm. and then after that there's a lot you need to do so these guys come in they don't understand what the, 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 the what what the process is and then you are there as a person who has been leading this for quite some time you just pick them it's a volunteer mm-hmm. uh, a volunteer ship mm-hmm. something uh, uh, of that sort so you pick them and then you show them the way mm-hmm. so that one i do it part part time mm-hmm. um mostly weekends because weekdays i'm ever busy uh, sorry monday to friday i'm ever busy mm-hmm. but weekends um at least i can get an hour to um mm-hmm. to just show them um yeah the way okay mm-hmm. so w- what are you leaning towards when if if I was to force you to tell us uh, like like well, what's why are you leaning towards in terms of what excites you the most about your day to day Mm, and uh, m- maybe also just to add on on, on that uh, you know for us uh, let's let's say the layman always thought the always thinks that uh, a software engineer is that person who always sits back on uh, over over a computer and uh, hard coding developing systems and based on what you're sharing with us you're more of uh, applying uh, your skills into interacting with bots and that's quite kind of new to me i don't know if also mm. tom you also had more or less the same mm. kind of idea mm-hmm. so mm. maybe in all this uh, you're not doing it uh, more or less like hard coding so what is it like uh, as tom is saying your more focused area um l- let me first um i don't know how to put it but let's go back a little bit mm-hmm. um i forgot to mention that um I'm also spending some time doing my personal projects because mm-hmm. as a, as a software engineer you have to do as many projects as possible. Yeah, yeah. The fact that you are, you are, you are placed somewhere doesn't mean that you relax and stop working on projects. Mm-hmm. And then um you understand that those, those projects you need to hard code them. Oh okay. Yes. So that doesn't mean that I'm not hard coding mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. but it's a good question because at the same time I mentioned that um we have a bot that does automation. Okay. okay. This is a bot that I have very like I can say I have key interest in it because I was part of the collaborators who worked on building the bot. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, um as you monitor it, sometimes there might be some things that as a marketing engineer you realize that oh there's this bit that maybe we can automate it in a way that instead of I um a user logging in manually like mm-hmm. inputting their email and their password we can automate it in a way that it's like a loop after it finishes its first uh, cycle mm-hmm. the next one it automatically uh, opens up and then enters its pin and it's the, the email that yeah. you have used yeah, and then yeah. it continues doing that so those are the things that um, I'm trying to talk about like you observe it mm-hmm. monitor it and then see whether there are things that needs to be improved and then improve them you work on them mm-hmm. yes so you go mm-hmm. to the code again try to implement that okay and sometimes you might find that uh, there are some messages that uh, the guys that you are trying to reach out to clients and software engineers they have sent two messages these messages um let's say right now you are you are doing this manually like you are um recording them manually mm-hmm. but then you realize that oh, um these messages i can 
advance or I can make changes to the, this bot in a way that it can at least um, save them in a CSV file or, a, or an Excel file. So you work on that as well. At some point you might realize that um, I need to do some analytics or uh, yeah, I need to do some analytics to whatever data we collect you from collect. Uh -huh. uh, um, the, the platform that we are doing our marketing. Mm -hmm. So you again do something and uh, maybe implement or integrate some analytics to your bot. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So basically it's not just, it's not just developing uh, an algorithm and then sitting there and hoping that it finishes all of no, our work. No. You basically <laughs> have to <laughs> keep on configuring it yes. time and time yeah, again. I, 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 I normally tell uh, my spouse that this thing seems like it's easy, mm. but it's not easy because you need to be a critical thinker. Yeah, like you need, yeah. yeah, you need to be a critical thinker. You can't be seated somewhere just observing a boat doing something and yeah. then that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's 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 something that's worth noting. I think for some of us um, who, who at least have interacted with the board technology to some extent, especially if you are not in the developing side, mm -hmm. I think the assumption is always that okay, I'll just let me run this software and then I'll sit and, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and sit and have my lunch and then mm -hmm. four o'clock tea as it sorts out my day to day. Yeah, and and that's why the role that I was given by LD Talent is marketing engineer because the engineering bit is that now you're a marketing yeah. engineer. Yeah, not mm. just a marketing specialist. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's not uh, as what people are so much used to when you watch movie mm -hmm. and uh, people see IT IT people working. It's more like uh, they are either checking on their managers. If the manager is not around, they are either playing a game. Mm -hmm. When the manager walks in, they mm. switch it so quickly. Mm. So, but uh, as we also just uh, uh, journey along, mm -hmm. we get to understand that it's a lot. It mm -hmm. really needs your entire focus and entire. Mm -hmm. uh, a strength in terms of uh, a thought process as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, great. And b before we move, um, Ignatius mentioned something about uh, tech, like people really think that it's all about hard coding and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot, like there's a lot in tech because mm -hmm. we do have product managers, we have program managers, yeah. we have um, people like uh, UI UX designers, and mm -hmm. these are people who are normally forgotten when it comes to tech. People normally mm -hmm. like, Categorize tech with just hard coding, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, mm, and that's mm, it. But there's a lot, there's a lot you can do in tech. Yeah. Yeah, guys with in security, like mm. cloud computing. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. I understand that you're good in Azure, so yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I think that the interfacing bit for me, I think those are the groups that usually yeah, tend yeah. to uh, get the shorthand mm. of, of, of praise every single time. And by the way, people don't know that if, if, if an app doesn't make sense in terms of its, its workflow, mm -hmm. then uh, however good that innovation is, or whatever, whatever solution it's trying to solve, if people can't be able to interact with it and really get a feel of what it's trying to do, within the first minute or so, then it's not going to, it's not going yeah. to penetrate the market. So um, I think that's very exciting. You've shared quite a bit um, and in the short time you've been here with us. So for me, then my question would be, um, looking at what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, obviously when you're in school, uh, I don't think you'd have ever pictured doing all of these different things within such a short period of time. What do you think informed that? Why, why move towards a space where you are doing all of these different things? Is it because um, of you know, just career ambitions, uh, trying to match what the market needs, or maybe that so many different lucrative spaces that you are looking at. Why, why, when you look back at what you've done, what do you think informed you uh, shifting your shifting your um, objectives to make sure that you are, you know, you are touching all of these different things? Um, I'm, I'm going, uh, I'll take you back to 2020 when mm -hmm. I joined uh, the ambassador program, the Microsoft Land Student Ambassador Program. Um, before I joined the program, I used to, um, I, my own understanding was that provided that I've done a programming language mm -hmm. and uh, maybe let's say Python mm -hmm. and I've finished mm -hmm. and I've done the assignments in the program, mm -hmm. that's yeah. it. I'll <laughs> yeah. go out there and apply for a job and mm -hmm. uh, the recruiter would be like, you're hired. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that was not the case. Mm -hmm. So when I, joined, when I joined the ambassador program, mm -hmm. um, I realized that uh, there's a lot because I remember in 2020, around March, we mm -hmm. had a meetup for the ambassadors in Kenya at mm -hmm. the Microsoft ADC offices. Yeah, yeah, and the guys I met there were like guys who almost know everything. And then mm. the, the 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 tech stacks and the and the terms they are mentioning, mm. 
There are things that you have never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you have never heard of. You get lost in between. Uh, You've been in mm. class for three years, <laughs> but then someone mentioned uh, like Asia or even at AWS, and you don't yeah, even yeah, have yeah. An, an idea mm. of what that yeah, is. Yeah. And when I went back to the university, mm -hmm. I was like, "Is is Asia a, a cloud in? Co Actually, I, I used to call it Azure mm. instead of mm. Azure. Yeah, mm. yeah. So I was like, "Is this a cloud? Uh, sorry, uh, um, a, co a coding language or what mm. is it?" Oh, yeah. So <laughs> the challenge, the challenge, Ignatius, right? <laughs> the challenge you was, can't, you can't really butcher it in that level. Oh, uh, no. So yeah. the challenge uh, I had was uh, like, I the, okay, uh, mm. back in the university, mm. uh, you normally taught just the normal Java, C plus yeah. plus, C sharp, yeah. and then you go to the next, the, the next Maybe semester. Some PHP, uh, yeah, and yeah. then nobody mentions. Uh, of course, they mention cloud computing, but mm -hmm. yeah. it's like just mentioning the top player and then the others go research on your on your own. Yeah. yeah. So when yeah. I joined the program, mm -hmm. um it's a, it's a very good program because it has enlightened me and it has given me more exposure because mm -hmm. you're given some um challenges like you need to do a, a learning path on Microsoft Learn, you need mm -hmm. to do um some events so that you at least uh work on your speaking uh skills like mm -hmm. public speaking skills. Yeah, yeah. So I did a learning path on Azure and mm -hmm. what after the after the after one month of learning Azure, <clears throat> I came to realize that oh, this is just so it's more on co co cloud computing, mm -hmm. and it's even more theory than coding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. So I at least uh, it, I think the, the name of that learning part was the business value of Azure, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. is what yeah. gave me some insights of at least um, what yeah. cloud computing is. Yeah, I've, I've seen and then after that, line. yeah, yeah, and then mm -hmm. after that. Uh, I, 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 I tried to compare myself with the guys that we met at the Microsoft ADC office. Mm -hmm. And I realized that whatever I've been assuming that I know, um, at least I can rate myself two out of a hundred. And then mm -hmm. now this mm -hmm. gave me a challenge to upscale, yeah, learn yeah. more languages and do more frameworks. Mm -hmm. Like I used to tell myself that um, at the end of the day, if I do these uh, things, these, these guys are doing, I'll become a web developer, just be developing websites. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there's more to just, um, there's more to web development than just what uh, guys, uh, the information that you hear are outside here, mm -hmm. there's more. So yeah. I challenged myself, I did Azure, I did some Whoa. Python, I did wow. some... Uh, that I did. Nice. Yes, yeah. I did some uh, frameworks like mm -hmm. Django, mm -hmm. and then at some point I was doing uh, data science uh, on Coursera. I was given a free uh, course. I I was given actually some financial aid, mm -hmm. but that one did not go through. And the reason is you cannot be everywhere in tech, and this is something I normally tell the guys that I'm mentoring. Mm -hmm. I was trying to to do mobile application, web development, data science, cloud computing. Yeah, and then yeah. it, like I was exploding, it was giving me a burnout. Mm. So I had to hold on mm. and then as, as reassess myself and see where my passion is. Mm. And I came to realize that um, I'm someone who loves building products rather than building um, models to analyze data mm. and stuff like that or dealing with data. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to be honest with you, Tom, but mm. I'm, I'm not good with mathematics. In high school, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. not good. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to yeah, data yeah. science mm. and uh, stuff to do with the analytics, mm. you need to be good with mathematics, statistics yeah. and stuff like that. But I'll come back to it later in mm. the near future. Um, it's not that I've given, <laughs> I've given up on it, mm. but um, my passion is in just building products. Yeah. So yeah. that's when I decided to stick with uh, working on web applications. Mm, and mm. it's a broad area again, like you come in, it's just web development. You you assume it's CSS, HTML, mm. and mm. JavaScript, but mm. it's another broad area, like very mm. broad. Mm. Yeah, so those are the things that uh, have challenged me to at least work on, um, let me say advancing my skill set, mm. And at the same time, um, these are areas where, like you mentioned, lucrative, like it's a lot of money that guys normally get paid yeah. out here. Yeah. Um, apart from the fact that I want to upskill, mm. the money side, nobody, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's everyone loves money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone loves money. And that's why that, that's only one form of yes. <laughs> yeah, That's so, only one form of math that we can all agree yeah, on. So I, I yeah. can't be out here <laughs> upskilling for the sake of just upskilling. Yeah. I know yeah. what is after upskilling, mm -hmm. you'll get a job at the end of it all. Yeah. And that is after, of course, doing some projects. You can't do the learning and then here's a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 
the money uh upskilling um someone asked me the other day are you are you a lifelong learner and i was like uh, come to think of it i think i'm a lifelong learner because i've been learning over years and learning and learning and even even up to date i'm learning mm. yeah yeah that's I, I think, nice yeah and, and i think something that you mentioned that for me is very very important to mm-hmm. have guys understand from the get go mm-hmm. is that um you know all of these terms that you hear in the interviews web developer app mm-hmm. developer mm-hmm. those are just entry points yes yes, yes. they're just entry points of the best way to kind of simplify what that work entails but mm-hmm. as you've shared once you go into that space that's when you start realizing yeah okay so there's 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 ux and ui design mm-hmm. there's uh, infrastructure development there's all of these different mm-hmm. things and i'm glad to see that uh, you know you started exposing yourself to all of these different things because yeah. let me tell you i've been in that meeting <laughs> a few times in my career um in, in the 10 years that I worked in the tech space I've been in those sorts of meetings where you think okay um I'm going to participate in this panel discussion I know mm-hmm. there are a few tech guys there but uh yeah I've gained the laugh load so you get there you start hearing terms you're like hey, okay <laughs> so <laughs> so what space is that mm-hmm. uh, how do I get yeah so I think uh, that and and that's what's inspiring about your story Castro mm-hmm. because even as you finished um campus we've been keeping track of you we've talked to you mm-hmm. at different points in your career mm-hmm. and what I love about the discussions we always have is that we are always picking the next thing mm-hmm, and whether mm-hmm. it's uh, it's about you know something being lucrative mm-hmm. or really just testing out a new side of your career that you'd want to also thrive in you've always had that hunger so it's it's nice to hear that um at least when you talk of uh, the reason why you are where you are at it's it's because you know that hang of just testing different careers here mm. and there and also the lucrative side because yeah, it's 2023 yeah. and uh, we have to start making sure that we are making a living yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh given what we've talked about um specifically around um, you know the need for you to you know from at different points in your career on board different skills here and there to stay um relevant in regards to the market is there a feeling that uh, that's the general direction that people are taking uh within the technological space and if so how can we get more women and youth to start buying into that because clearly we are having an issue especially at tertiary level education where it's it's not reflecting that and so when you look at some of the people who are coming out of university they have to again spend close to half a million if i'm being honest again taking on some of these short high impact digital skilling programs so based on your experience do you think it's some it's it's um, a direct direction that we are slowly taking and if so how can we be able to get more women and youth investing in that process early so that they can start being productive early in their career uh, thank you Tom. that's a good question so um yes The answer is yes that's the, the direction we are headed to right now actually not headed to but that is what is happening right now yeah, yeah. um guys are, are doing their computer science and it courses and even the other courses at the university mm-hmm. but then when they all come outside here they are the, they are the same level yeah, yeah you you did computer science mm-hmm. but you are the same level as someone who did maybe uh, uh bd like bachelor of uh, education yeah, and maybe yeah. swahili or uh, siari mm-hmm. so like these guys are the same mm-hmm. but look at someone who um at the university level or even college mm-hmm. um decided to upskill mm-hmm. and they had that zeal and the energy to keep on learning yeah, yeah this yeah. person will come outside here a very different person um uh, compared to their classmates guys who are just in the same class as yeah. you and before we even move to you then uh, women mm-hmm. i'm going to give an, a good example um my niece uh, completed high school in 2021 mm-hmm. and um the parents were like we want her to do um uh, i don't know uh, take her to the barracks so that she can become a police or mm. maybe do a, a bachelor of actually not a bachelor of something mm. go to a college so that mm-hmm. she can become maybe a teacher and mm. i was like um you guys normally hear that tech has so many people and mm-hmm. i'm going to put it in quotes that mm-hmm. it has many people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that, that notion uh, i think uh came up in 2010 around there when uh, computers were just being taught at uh, like uh, high school yeah, like for yeah. me um i first saw a computer in high school so i can say at that point Ooh. somewhere at that point mm. so parents normally think that 
since you have done some uh, computer in high school yeah, or after high school time, you have yeah. done uh, packages mm, mm. now that is it and it has so many people yeah, <laughs> yeah. and even if we say that um, guys who have done it and computer science they are within that gap or uh, sorry within that group the, the, of the, so the, many the, people mm-hmm. <laughs> there are so many but very few have what is needed out mm, here in mm, the market yeah yeah so what i did with uh, my niece uh, she's at st paul's Mm, mm, okay. And she's also in the ambassador program. And the story behind this is, mm. I told the parents that um, I'm going to advise you guys and please make sure that you follow through what I'm going to yeah, tell you. Yeah, well. I want uh, this uh, girl to do a boot camp in um, a tech institute in Nairobi. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I want you to take her to St. Paul's because that is the university that is... Um, some are going to accept or allow her to start um, learning um, uh, something to do with IT or computer science mm. with the grade she got. Yeah. Because some universities you might go and maybe mathematics, you did not get some uh, maybe points and they need that. Mm. But mm. like there's a balance in what you have and the requirements, mm-hmm. it, it kind of like favors you. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. advise them um, and they... They were doubting me at first, but they, they followed through the advice. So she did some course, um, a three-month bootcamp. Uh, that is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Mm-hmm. And she was also taught on uh, UI UX designing. Mm. This was at St. Paul's? Or, no, no. Or uh, an, this um, institute. an institute in Nairobi. It's oh, called okay. Zalego. Mm-hmm. And then after the three months, um, we had earlier on applied for a diploma in uh, business in IT, mm-hmm. St. Paul's Machakos campus. Yeah. So immediately she finished her certification, uh, that is a boot camp. Mm-hmm. She got uh, into St. Paul's and uh, I think last year, at, uh, around November, she had uh, gr- uh, not graduated, but uh, completed her studies. Mm-hmm. So um, in January this year, they still kept on um, following my advice mm-hmm. and they took her to St. Paul's Lemuru. Okay. And then luckily, because I was trying to push at the same time as she is at uh, Zalego, mm-hmm to push so that she can apply for the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador program. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I've seen the benefits that comes with that program mm-hmm. and I know as a lady because um, from where I come, I can count like in my village, this is someone who is a lady and they in IT or anything to mm-hmm. do with mm-hmm. STEM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can count for you. Mm-hmm. So I said, I'm going to invest in this young girl yeah. and I know she is going to get somewhere with time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a process that even you yourself, you might start wondering what is happening. Like, mm-hmm. it's not picking. Mm-hmm. It's not picking. <laughs> that's, that's true, so yeah. what, what are these parents thinking of me? Like, it's not picking. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has done this and that, and but then there's nothing happening. Mm-hmm. But I always trust a process whenever I initiate it. Yeah, so yeah. this year, January, she uh, got enrolled into St. Paul's for so mm-hmm. a Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science. Mm-hmm. And yeah, at the same good. time... Mm-hmm. She was um, accepted in the Plant Student Ambassador Program. Mm. Um, tell me if you know uh, my story. I'm someone who has been persistent and I've always persevered in everything that I tried. Yeah, of yeah, course, sure. I've failed in many things. Yeah. I fail, I rise up, I fail, mm-hmm. I rise up. <laughs> so that is the same, same strategy that I use because you used to send applications, then uh, Microsoft Learn declines. We are play again, decline. This is now for you. For her. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh-huh. she was accepted this year and I was happy to see yesterday when Microsoft was at St. Paul's. She mm-hmm. was, uh, um, I think she was giving some talk there, some tech talk. Oh. Um, she was part of the speakers. Mm-hmm. So I think I've combined the question about uh, mm-hmm. guys learning and yeah. also putting more women and youth in, uh, in tech. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think... Also, I can uh, add some more maybe uh, context into this. Mm -hmm. I I normally look at someone, uh, both youth, uh, um, let me say both women and men in terms of youth. And if I see you have um, something that I feel like you you have a special talent with you that Mm -hmm. even if you did a different course, Mm Or you never did any course. I feel like if I show you some direction, like I tell you, go to free code camp. Mm-hmm. There's a course I want you to learn. Mm-hmm. Of course, I analyze this after I ask you about yourself. Like you just yeah. give me a, an overview of yourself, and then I'm like, I feel like you're good in design. I feel like you're good in front end. I feel like you're good in back end. I feel like you can do this and that. Mm-hmm. So I have friends um, who we 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 actually finished. Um, 
not high, I can say high school at the same time. Okay, I did high school twice. Mm-hmm. And that is the story of perseverance. I did twice. I failed the first time and then I went back. Mm-hmm. So this, I, this is KCSE. KCSE. Oh. So I normally, oh. <laughs> I normally pick these guys and then I show them like, go do this course. Of course, some of them will give up, but then after some time, we will follow up again. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. mm-hmm. continue doing it. There's something uh, good that is um, ahead mm-hmm. of it. Don't yeah. give up. Yeah. So. I can, I can even say it's not high school only, but at the campus level, mm. um, I was very uh, vocal at the university um, as uh, the CEO for Ajira Club and also Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. So many students know that this guy is in tech. Mm. So someone would just reach out to you and uh, they're like, um, I need I need some advice. I want to do this course. Uh, this uh, this uh, course, uh, yeah. pro- programming language, mm-hmm. but I have no idea where to start. Mm-hmm. Or someone reaches out to you and they're like, I have a, I have a younger bro uh, or a sister, and I want them to venture into tech. Mm-hmm. How do they get started? Mm-hmm. So now you show them like start from here, mm-hmm. and then after that mm-hmm. go here, and then after that go here. Mm-hmm. By the time it's uh, like one year or two years, this is someone uh, that is already working or they are doing something yeah. constructive. And they're still in school at that point. Yeah, they're still they? in school. Yeah. Others have uh, already completed. Mm-hmm. So the right. Um, direction to take or uh, what we are actually doing right now most guys are completing uh, their studies and then it's not it's okay it's not their fault mm. because at, at the same time most universities what they do is you get in the university first year outside uh, you get out for there but they fail to at least in like engage you guys with mentors mm, or coaches mm, or yeah. people who know like the industry very well so for them they'll just uh, take you uh, through the system and then you're out but i was telling myself that if when i joined first year we were given like someone like castro came to our university and told us uh, or gave us some insights on how uh, the tech industry is, mm-hmm. I would have been uh, someone uh, different, much different from the person like maybe I was a few years ago. Yeah, or maybe, point, or maybe yeah. I would have uh, got my first role in second year, a software mm-hmm. engineering role in second year. Yeah. So, yes, things are going in the right direction, but I feel like they are slow. Yeah, they still they are very up. slow. Yeah, yeah people mm. are um are trying to ensure that they are, they have they uh, put in place um strategies or procedures to ensure that women and you those uh, especially women because you would find in a class of around 50 students only four are women in IT or mm. computer science. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those those things are in place but they are, they, are, they are not moving at uh, fast paced mm. speed it's very mm. slow mm. but it's my hope that um because we had the same we had the same uh discussion at the ADC i think like 2 months ago mm. about how we can have more women uh in tech mm. so i'm hoping these things are going to be implemented and then put in place so that at mm. least we have more women in tech yeah yeah and and okay. maybe Castro, I don't know if uh, you, there's something you mentioned about you guiding your your cousin, uh, niece. Y- y- your niece, mm. and you talked uh, personally to their parents. Mm. Do you think there is? Uh, are we still in that age whereby parents are still dictating what we are doing, and uh, they really want us to do the old age kind of uh, careers? And what do you think? Uh, just a snippet of what the journey can really change. Yeah, Ignatius, mm. I think because he, it also affects uh, women into such kind of spaces. Yeah. yeah. Um, what I can say is uh, we are still uh, in that age where parents uh, dictate what you do in the uh, university. Mm. Like uh, you, you would have a passion for something. Let's say yeah. someone mm-hmm. wants to do music, mm-hmm. and then your, your parents will tell you that uh, we want you to do education uh, mm-hmm. so that you can become a teacher like me, yes, or yes. I want you to do. Um, food and beverage so that you can become a waitress or a chef or something like me. But that should not be the case. Mm, You're mm. supposed to give someone the freedom to choose what they want to do. And I think this mostly affects ladies. Like most ladies... Yeah, more, more, than, any, more yeah, than anybody else. Most ladies... Um, I'm going to give examples. Uh, the university, I had a friend. I won't mention the name. She has been through a quick actually. <laughs> so this lady was telling me that uh, she was forced to do education so that she can become a teacher. Mm. But for her... Um, what you would have wished to do is law. You understand? Mm, yeah. 
So I was like, why can't you change right now and do something else? And she was like, no, I don't want to do that because my dad knows someone in the university and if I change, mm. he will come here. Yeah. You see? Mm. So uh, people, I don't know. I had another friend also. Uh, she wanted to do journalism. Mm -hmm. and then the parents were like, no, we want you to do English literature so that you can mm. become a teacher. You see. So mm. it, it, I think a lot needs to be done in terms mm. of just uh, ensuring that our parents also uh, have yeah. an open hands and an open exactly. thought on exactly. this process. Mm. Let the young people also just uh, visualize what they really want. Actually, mm. what I can say is we need to have more like seminars for parents to be enlightened ah, yeah. exactly. on, on how to uh, let exactly. their kids choose what they want to do uh, with their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm so glad about the discussion you said that happened uh, in Microsoft because I think there's a tendency to think that uh, you know the way we approach this is by showing a, a superior intellect yeah, yeah, yeah. from the point of view of we know what's there in the future and so just believe us. But again, you've talked about the importance of just bringing all of these people mm -hmm. into one space. We have yeah. to stop assuming that just because we seem to be moving forward as a society, mm -hmm. that some of the norms that were there in the late 80s or 90s yeah. don't still exist. Right. Believe me when I tell you when it comes to women, I don't know about the other side of guys being a man, obviously, and also being privileged enough to where I had parents who are already in the IT space. So it was never a discussion of, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Does this make sense? And then, no, no, no they saw it early enough and then they were able to build on that interest to get me to where I am now. But the truth is for women, it's completely different, especially from marginalized communities. And if you can start creating platforms for me where you bring them all together and tell them that, look, we, we are going into 2030, 2040. These are the skills that are needed. And I'm sure Castro, even in your discussion, you're not necessarily even alluding to her being an IT expert. Or, right? It's about just having enough digital skills to figure out how you can be able to integrate it into whatever or whatever she wants to do moving forward. So I think, yeah, that, that's, that's very, very key. And um, yeah, you also pointed out the fact that it's, it's happening at campus level, but I think it needs to be more consistent because for, again, uh, some of us have been out of that space for quite a while. I think you're, you're closing in on five years since you graduated. No. Or... My, mine is just like, um, okay, it's not even two. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you've been outside for, for a while I now. I think it's only one and a half. Oh, it's only one and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but either way, um, you know, being an outsider now, <laughs> for lack of any better term, uh, it's it's very difficult for you to get such platforms again, uh, not not in a consistent manner that you are getting them while you're in school. It's very difficult for you to get such platforms where you can be able to come in, mm -hmm. share insights and knowledge about what's happening out there from a tech perspective, and even mentor. And I think if universities open up to that, I think we had the discussion even at St. Paul's mm -hmm. when we were talking to them about what next steps can they be able to take. Then we can start seeing some meaningful change. I think working towards a space where we are not having four out of the 50 people being girls participating to me. I think that's that's what uh, inclusivity has to be about. And even for some of our people from, uh, you know, Shags, Bundalangis, yeah. <laughs> and Chakos, and all of these different yeah. spaces, figuring out even for them, how do I bring them in? I think that should be our priority because believe it or not, I don't think any of us here were born and raised in Nairobi. No. Uh, in the when you hear mm. Castro saying that uh, he saw a machine, I think it, from one, it, from one, that's the first time you have seen. <laughs> 2006, <laughs> that's the first time you have seen a machine. So some people it might seem weird because most of them were born with smartphones, uh, smartphones around, but it's the truth. It's the truth. Most people, in fact, guys who are in their 30s, 40s, who are experts in IT right now, saw those machines when they're in Form 3, Form 4. Some of them in, even in their first year yeah. of campus. So, yeah, I, I like that approach. And hopefully, uh, even as we continue with this podcast, we can be able to um, you know, expound on it and see how we can be able to bring different stakeholders into this space. Because the good thing about working for Acquict is that uh, you know we, we action uh, most of these things. We don't just speak and let them now float and hope that somebody picks up on them. So hopefully from a programming perspective, we can be able to look at how we then do that. And for those people listening uh, and are interested in partnering within that particular space, again, our doors are always open. And as long as you have that same objective of bringing as many people as we can into this space, then I'm sure we can be able to succeed in it. 
Yeah. So maybe we can move on. Um, now you talked about um, your work as a Ajira, is it Ajira? Oh, CEO. Are, the CEO for Ajira. Ajira. CEO. Mm. This is at uh, your campus mm. and also a Microsoft... Uh, Learn Student Ambassador. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so just based on your experience and the work that you've done there, um, just how impactful do you think those programs are? And um, how can we be able to find ways in which we cascade it to, you know, some of the law institutions like TVETs, VTIs and VTZ so that they can be able to benefit from the same? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, Ajira. Mm -hmm. So with Ajira, I can say we made a very uh, great or big impact mm -hmm. at the university because uh, what you understand is guys at the university, we come from uh, different backgrounds. Yeah, there's, yeah. Some, there's some who come from uh, backgrounds where they have um, everything on their table and then there's someone who would come there and they're struggling to pay their fees. They're struggling to even um, pay fees for their siblings. Mm -hmm or even provide for their families and at the university level. Yeah. So with Ajira, I can say we made a very big impact and the impact is in uh, many ways. The first thing is before I became the CEO mm -hmm. uh, for Ajira, that, is, that was back in 2018, mm -hmm. um, we used to organize for seminars um, just with friends. Yeah. Uh, we could pick a room and then organize like 15 people. And since I was the only guy who had knowledge on um, on online work and how the app work, uh, freelance platform works, of course, that was from you guys. Um, everyone used to like look up to me like um, whenever it comes to online work stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they knew even in first year I was doing online work. Mm -hmm. So I could organize for sessions and then um, train some of the guys. And then after the training, I tell them now when you meet someone who wants to learn the training, uh, more on online work, yeah. uh, equip, them, equip them with the skills and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, sorry, those are guys from my class. And Tom, I'm sure you have met some of them uh, even during mentorship. They're already mentors, some yeah, of them are trainers. Yeah. And the guys uh, introduced us to Yes, Mohammed, uh, yeah. uh, Moses, and uh, there's Omar. There are so many, I can't mm, mention all the mm, names. Mm. These are guys who uh, we started the journey together yeah. back then. And now they're, they're, they're guys who are gurus in uh, tech world or even online work uh, uh, related stuff. So. Ajira made a very big impact mm -hmm. in Kibab University. We trained, like I could organize for trainings mm -hmm. um, each each month. Like um, now after it was offici officially like launched as a club, sorry, mm -hmm. I think I've gone too fast on that. Mm -hmm. Of course, I started as a one-man army, like just training them. But then uh, we were lucky to have uh, the Ministry of ICT uh, mm -hmm. at Kibab University. Mm -hmm. They came for a one-week um, training. Yeah. And uh, it was successful. They were actually training the fourth years, but since we were uh, third years, mm -hmm. and I had it to, it's more online work. We had to like get crash with um, a few of my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had to get crash with a few of my friends, and. Um, the last day, the, the guys uh, were electing a CEO because it's a new club that has been launched. Mm -hmm. So um, for quite some time, I've never had a passion for leadership and stuff like that. Even yeah, when I was yeah. in high school, yeah. like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I could be given the role of being the class monitor or a prefect. And then after mm -hmm. one month, I'm like, You're dropping no, that, right? <laughs> I don't want this. This yeah. is not working for me. Yeah. Um, in Form 4, I was told to vie for the school head boy. Mm. I never did that. Mm. But now things started catching up with me really fast at the university level. Mm. Because now during the last day of Yajira, mm. um, the guys there knew I was doing online work. So we were told um, to stand in front of the uh, of, of the lab and then each one to state um, just a few things about online work and what they've been doing. Yeah. And then... Um, since I had, uh, okay, you guys um, in 2015, 16, we could go places and then I could speak publicly. So that yeah. one uh, it helped kind me. Of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so I I stood in front of the guys there and then I shared a, a, just a story about um, how Arquic uh, empowered me with the online work skills mm -hmm. and how I've done some work on, on app work. Mm -hmm. But then at the end I said that, but no, I'm not interested in this. Um, I have friends here who are interested, you can justify for them. And the guys from the ministry are like, no, you guys are going outside. We'll let the, the, other, the other students inside the room vote for you guys. Mm -hmm. 
and then we decide uh, after that who is the leader. Mm. So when we came back, I was I was given all the votes. <laughs> Everyone mm. wanted me to lead, and yeah, because of your I had, story. Yeah, I had to yeah. accept. Yeah. Uh, I had yeah. to accept the the mm. leadership role that has mm. had been instilled mm. in me. So now after being given that opportunity, mm. um, I used to organize for trainings like. Mm. Each each month, like let's say this month we do for first years, mm -hmm. next month we do for second years, yeah. another month third years, and then you keep on uh, repeating the cycle like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine training all those guys and then giving them mentorship. And at the same time, now they go back um, to their specific um, maybe classes and yeah. then they train other guys. Mm. So we have trained more than 15,000, oh, sorry, 1,500. And it's, I'm sure the 1,500 mm, uh, managed to train others. Into, yeah. Right mm. now, Kibab University has one of the biggest uh, Ajira clubs in uh, the Western region. Mm. Yeah, and uh, there was a time even the CS uh, wanted to come to launch it uh, at the university level because mm. it was a very big and vibrant uh, club. Mm. So we have made a very big impact. Yeah. At least guys at the university are doing um, online work. And mm -hmm. even those who left the university and never managed to secure um, work outside here, mm -hmm. they, are, they are relying on uh, online work for their survival out here. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go to the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program, mm -hmm. I was the first student to be accepted as a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador mm -hmm. at the university. Yeah, yeah. And... I remember that was when uh, COVID had hit um, the, the whole world mm. and we were going home. Mm. So <laughs> since it was the first time and I had never done an online session, like before COVID, we never had used to have online sessions. Mm. Mm. Guys could just meet and discuss yeah, stuff school, yeah. within the university and then mm. you go. Mm -hmm. But now um, COVID-19 med has now um, do most of the meetings online. Actually, the first event, because I mentioned that for you to be advanced to better within the ambassador program, mm -hmm. you need to do an on, sorry, not an online event, but now COVID-19 made it online. Yeah, yeah. You need to do an event within your university, a tech event, mm -hmm. and then speak about- uh, oh, So you organize it on your yeah, own? Yeah, you organize it oh. on your own. Okay. Because uh, Microsoft Learn uh, normally like, uh, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a program that will equip you with many things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you will learn uh, stuff to do with tech. At the same time, your leadership leadership skills will be sharpened. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, your soft skills like how you can communicate, how you can organize for events, mm -hmm. that will be sharpened. At the, like it's 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 a one in all uh, program. Yeah. So. I did my first event and uh, I informed the students that I'm now a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador uh, within the university. And uh, the good thing about the program is you can become a student ambassador as many as possible, like even if it's a hundred, they don't mm. care. So long as you have qualified, they have accepted you within the university, mm. you get on board. Mm. So. I did uh, yeah. just maybe a little bit. Is it uh, the joining a journey is only to the campus students or even open to the no, community? I think it's even it's, outside. It's uh, yeah. for the campus students. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing your bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. master's degree, mm -hmm. or your, your PhD, oh, like, mm -hmm. you have so to be enrolled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or they don't take people from, from No, outside. from outside, it's mm -hmm. not possible. You have oh. to be a student. Oh, okay. So, yes, I did the event and then I, I, I enlightened them. I told them that there's this program. Uh, this is what we are doing. I think my first event was on machine learning. And um, Tom, what, what, what I realized about these things is the more like you at, at, at this specific moment, I might think that I know a lot of things, but after you interact with other people, you realize, ah, no. Yeah, I'm still exactly. down there. Yeah. Like you need to you need to upskill. You need to uh, collaborate with other guys so that you can know what is outside there. Mm -hmm. So that event I did with some guys uh, from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, three students were helping me to like they were my guest speakers. Yeah. And then I was the host. Mm -hmm. So we did the event, and then the students from the university were like they were excited about it. Mm -hmm. It's the first time we are having an event. There's an the, 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 the guys from Nigeria, and then our student. They, they, we have one of our own here. Mm -hmm. So they were excited, and then I encouraged them to apply. Of course, one thing I, I think it's, this is something that exists across all, uh, maybe universities. Mm -hmm. Whenever people see something, some of them will just like brush it off. Yeah, you yeah. see, and then others will pick it up and then they'll own it and then they'll apply. Mm -hmm. So I could tell some of my classmates, please apply for this. And they're like, uh, will we be speaking publicly? 
And I'm like, yes, <laughs> you'll be speaking, of course. Uh, and then after you tell them that they'll be speaking, they're like, ah, no, that one, no, no. <laughs> and then I'm like, now how will you become a leader or how will you survive out here if you can't speak publicly? Yeah, yeah. Some of them picked it up and um, the, uh, the impact that I can now start speaking of is Towards the end of 2021, um, I had a friend of mine who was joining Kibabi University in first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, his dad is a friend of mine, he's our lecturer. So he told me that I have a son who is joining uh, here, first year. Mm -hmm. And he told me that he saw a video of uh, someone named Castro on YouTube. He was doing something to do with Microsoft Learn, uh, mm -hmm. machine learning. Mm -hmm. I was like, that was him. So he now the father was telling me that he told me that he wants to join this program how does he join it mm -hmm. and i was like once he, he comes here mm -hmm. let me know actually he called me when we were at home mm -hmm. so when we resumed because uh in is it 2020 not 2021 sorry it's, mm -hmm. it's in 2020 around uh october so yeah, when he resumed still, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. when he resumed after doing our exams mm -hmm. um i met him i showed him um how like things are done there he applied and then january 2021 he was accepted mm. now he's a very big name in the ambassador program he has actually gone beyond where i am i'm a better learn ambassador he's a gold ambassador he has done a lot of he has made a lot of impact even than mm. what i'm speaking about right now mm. so yeah so there's a track basically they, yeah they, 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 this impact that you are seeing uh, yeah. from your point of Very view. Very positive impact. In all of these different uh, campuses. Mm -hmm. And the thing maybe just before I move to that second part of the question, mm -hmm. You say that you were training people on online work before Ajira came in. Yeah, before Ajira came. Actually, mm. whenever I'm introducing myself, uh, the university, I normally, uh, instead of saying the CEO, I'm the founder of the club because Ajira yeah. came and they found <laughs> the club and then oh. now we picked with them. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'll tell you something. I think the, the, the club is present in all universities, yeah, if yeah. I'm oh, not yeah. wrong, mm -hmm. but they are not performing. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. even the other time we went to, you remember when we went to Taita Taveta, uh, there's uh, that university. Yeah, it was uh, okay. Students could just recognize yeah, that yet yeah, there's a club, but it wasn't that functional. The one, mm. the one we have at Kibabi University is uh, more vibrant than uh, the Microsoft Learn Ambassador Program. Mm -hmm. But now I have plans underway to make sure that they are kind all. Of the, uh, yeah. yeah, because the Ambassador Program uh, has very few you guys mm. now mm. the ajira club like it has so many students and some of them have been have been be like uh, absorbed by ajira like they're mm. working for ajira yeah, yeah yeah so i can say ajira has made at least because mm. ajira anyway ajira started before microsoft learn mm. but they are, they are they are ahead of uh, learn but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see how we can uh, collaborate with the university and ensure mm. that at least more students get into the ambassador program mm. as well. Yeah, because what I was alluding to is that it seems like it's based on your effort. And, and that's, yeah. again, something that we have to acknowledge and celebrate because in your end, I was there, I was giving a talk, I think, a few weeks ago. And um, you remember, I think it was with the production team. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. When we finished the talk, there were like two, two guys who came to speak to mm -hmm. The Jira Digital, uh, the Jira Digital program, mm -hmm. and they weren't excited or even enthusiastic about the prospect. Mm -hmm. To the point where I was like, I had to call the the the, the, the career office uh, guy and tell her, look, boy, you need to get uh, more passionate people to kind of speak ah. to this because if you see the way they were announcing it, I was like, hey, okay. So if I was a student and you are telling me that I can work online and the way you are speaking. To it, it's as if it's it's an extra chore mm -hmm. that they will be doing <laughs> as, as they <laughs> as they go on to learn. And I, I, I just I didn't see it resonate with the students there. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot that can be said within sure, that sure, space. Sure, because sure, even sure. before we go into how you can be able to cascade it down to TVETs mm -hmm. and, and VTIs, I think a lot can be done in terms of you offering consultancy to some of these universities oh, yeah, so yeah. that they can be able to scale it up to that point. Because I know for a fact in your end, it's close to non-existent. Mm. And in those coastal universities and, and, and colleges, sorry to put them on the spotlight, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's not there. It's there by name, mm. yeah, yeah, but they yeah. can't even be able to mobilize, let's say even 10 to 15 students mm. in one semester. I think yeah. uh, this all depends on the leadership of the club. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was the first, uh, I don't know why they decided to call us CEOs because mm. It felt like a big <laughs> name, I, yeah. I preferred a chairman mm. or something, mm. but I was the first CEO yeah, and yeah. whenever they called me, I think I was there this year, mm -hmm. March, mm -hmm. um, 
like I mentioned, the CS for ICT was uh, to come uh, for a launch, but mm -hmm. uh, due to unavoidable circumstances, it didn't manage. But I was invited. I went there. We had a full hall, like more than mm -hmm. 300 students in a hall. Mm -hmm. And I gave a talk there. We didn't even have a mic, but I was able to speak mm -hmm. louder because yeah. there were so many. Yeah. I think you saw that video. There was a video that I shared. Uh, mm, yeah, you, was it? What did I see it? Was it on your Facebook or? Yeah, I saw on Facebook. Similar. Yeah, 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 and uh, it was also shared by Kibabi University mm. uh, media uh, team. Mm -hmm. So, like, it was a very big thing. Even we had even like uh, guys had tents out there. I don't know the activations team mm -hmm. from Ajira. Guys were given uh, some swag. Like, it's it's very big in Kibabi. You guys need to visit Kibabi. Yeah, I think so. you need to organize. <laughs> you guys that need there. to organize. Yeah, it's yeah. very big there. You're organizing it for us, though. It's okay, no problem. Being the CEO. The good thing <laughs> is, yeah. the, he has the, key. the good thing uh, is now the patron, yeah. who, who happens to be a very, a very good friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she normally calls me. Uh, she's our COD. She normally calls me, mm -hmm. um, and she's like, Ajira is doing very well here. Mm. How how are we going to like uh, ensure that the Learn Ambassador program also does mm. well here? Mm. She wants them to be at the same pace, mm. like none is behind the other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm gathering, and I think it's something that uh, that also falls on your lap in terms of responsibilities moving forward, is that you, the, the best thing that these people need to do, um, forget even the TVETs for, for just a few seconds, is that they need to create a forum where uh, guys such as yourself can be able to go out there and share about how you can make it how you can make some of these clubs mm -hmm. successful mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, yeah. Because they also have to accept that uh, they have to start from ground zero and then start repairing the image. Uh, in, there are very, very big universities that have a very negative image towards the Jira digital club. Uh, Not because of its, its whole thesis, but because of the leadership that they voted in. To, yeah, that is what I'm to trying to say. Of, yeah. Leadership will determine the way yeah. you will go as a, as, a, yeah. as a club, as a community, like it's all about leadership. And then, mm. then again, as a leader, you have to be there for you, for your, for your communities. Mm. Because I can't be a leader and then whenever they call me, I'm like, I'm busy. Yeah, uh, you're busy, you're doing this, this and that. Sometimes yeah. I go out of my way to ensure that at least I go to Bungoma, mm -hmm. do the talk and then I come back again. Yeah. 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 So do you think there's a space in which you can um, obviously, having having discussed the fact that maybe there needs to be some sort of leadership role provided in a consultancy sort of contract where you go and speak to these leaders and kind of build from there. I think that's something that we really can really help these people. And but, it can yeah. just re uh, bring the energy back and yeah, people can yeah. utilize that. Especially in some uh, of these big universities with a big yeah, population. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But now the challenge moving forward is do you see these being, do you see this being able to be scaled down to a TVET or even a vocational training center? Because one thing I'll tell you is that if there's a group that will benefit or that can benefit from digital freelancing as a concept, forget a skill, as a concept alone, are these, uh, there are these people because those are the ones who are primed from the gig, uh, for the gig economy. Because most of the things that they are being trained on are not things that uh, exist within the long contract realm. They're things of, okay, let me let me provide this service for you for like this period of time and then you can pay me at the end of it. So do you see there being a path uh, for, you know, clubs such as Ajira to be able to be cascaded down to these TVETs and VTCs? And if so, um, maybe what are some of the things, just briefly, what are some of the things that need to happen for them to start benefiting from, from yeah, that as well? So, uh, okay, let me start by saying this. Um, I think last month, I didn't know this existed, but I saw um, a classmate. Mm -hmm. He was giving a tech talk at uh, a TV in, mm -hmm. I think it was in Gish or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was uh, on uh, the Google Developer Clubs. Yeah. So I don't know whether it exists countrywide or maybe they decided to uh, implement it within the university or maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe they decided to just invite a university from outside to come and have the talk there. Yeah. But I saw that happening. Oh, okay. But then... Um, Yes, it's possible. And what we can do is, um, you see, like my time when I was uh, the CEO for Ajira Club, mm -hmm. we were we were given the responsibility of ensuring that you do not only like um, give this information and knowledge to just your university. Yeah, you can yeah. even touch guys from outside there. It's a community It's outreach. a community thing. Uh, yeah. But now the oh. mistake we did, and I feel, I feel like maybe those who are um, leading the club now can uh, pick it up is, 
we have a Kibabi teachers training college there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know whether they are doing it now, but I'll consult and ask mm, this. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like he, 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 these events that they do, they can, even if they, the guys from that uh, college won't come to the university, they can organize for an, an event and go there mm-hmm. just to speak with the guys and see mm-hmm. how they can onboard them into into these programs. Yeah, yeah. And again, I feel like... Um, I don't know whether Ajira and these other programs are doing it, but if they're not doing it, it's high time like they went there and had a meeting with maybe the uh, university administration and uh, maybe see how they can at least put them uh, on board because there's no need of having a, a community that only focuses on one area and then mm. these other guys are also within the community. So my part is a leader at the university, we can do... Cl- uh, sorry, club meetings or maybe sessions or events, mm. whether it's Microsoft Learn or Azira and any other, mm. at, the, at that other maybe TV or maybe mm, institution, yeah. so that at least guys there can also be enlightened and understand that uh, there's more like this. Mo- there was a time I was telling my spouse that um, these things that we normally do here, someone outside there does not know they exist. Mm-mm. Someone outside there does not know, like, there is tech, there is this complicated stuff people do out here. Like, there are yeah, so many bots. people who do not, yeah. <laughs> there are so many. And the, the, the good thing with me is uh, whenever I'm in the public space, I don't like speaking about how I know tech. I try to keep it low. Mm. Because um, I, someone might, like, um, wonder, like, oh, what is this person speaking about? Mm. Is he a terrorist or yeah. <laughs> what are they speaking yeah. about? Yeah. So I would rather just, yes, I would rather just uh, shut my mouth and maybe do that privately so many people don't know that these things exist Mm -hmm. and i feel like uh, it's not only on the uh, in the tv it's even uh universities and campuses most people do not know like these things exist at jira tech and everything like they do not know them Yeah. yeah Yeah, so I think a lot can be said about um, what efforts uh, can be made to ensure that this is cascaded to uh, TVETs. But I think what I love about the conversation we've just had is that uh, you, you've talked of a willingness of uh, you know some of these people in those positions, the CEO positions, as you've put it, to kind of go out of their way and form those structures uh, in those institutions and support them fully. Because again, um, as I said earlier in the conversation, the TVET sector is one that's going to define the future of this country and it's not my words you've heard it from the president we've heard it from uh, you know different css and pss because again that's where most of um, our young people will fall um, and and it's not an unfortunate situation you know you can't really get somebody's intelligence based on binary performance it's just where they are so if we can be able to find a way in which we bring this uh, programs and I, I love the fact that you talked about community outreach. Bring them to where they are, and then see how you can be able to set similar structures. I think then we we stand a very very good chance because let me tell you, you get the best online workers in that space because they are already embedded with that mindset of okay, if I'm training on MVM, uh, MVM which is motor vehicle mechanics, uh, if I'm training on dress making welding, all of these different things. These are quick short-term contracts that I can be able to use to to make a living as quickly as possible. So there's a lot of space there that I think we can be able to uh, explore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So focusing on a bigger picture, what do you believe can be done to bring on board national government, private sector in integrating and uh, streamlining uh, shorter impact uh, digital skilling programs? Thank you, Ignatius, for that question. All I can say is that um, the the government won't come to you uh, as an institution, Mm -hmm. but you have to put in place procedures and um, like you have to come up with something that you can present to them and tell them that we have this, um, can you chip in and assist us in maybe uh, um, having this digital upskilling courses or maybe this digital, um, anything digital that can assist um, students within the university Mm -hmm. to at least get get something that can help them sustain their lives within the university. And um, when it comes to the private sector, um, one thing I noticed is that um, most private sectors are always ahead. Like they they come up with the procedures and then they come to you. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if you know of a private um, sector or some organizations that can assist you in maybe um, bridging the gap, the digital gap skill that we have within universities, as a university or a 
an institution just come up with um, some strategies and then come up with a plan go to the organizations out there and ask them how they can chip in and assist you in ensuring that your students are not left behind because some universities are always ahead of the others because they know these things. And it's good that you have asked that question because it has made me remember something. Uh, mostly universities that are far from uh, the city like Nairobi, like universities in uh, Western Kenya and Nyanza region, Garissa and stuff like that, they always um, get like, they get, um, I don't know which, which is the right word to, to use, mm -hmm. but they might get forgotten when it comes to like uh, getting the share that has been put in place by yeah. these organizations mm -hmm. or even the government because sometimes they feel like these are these are universities that are far and when impl the, the, when these organizations are implementing um, some of these things sometimes they say that we want to start with uh, you know you want to, we want to start with Nairobi we want to start with these, these universities because they are close to us mm -hmm. but I think the best approach to 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 this is like you can consider even a university in Mombasa, yeah. and I love what Aquict has been doing. Like you guys normally go to even Kilifi, sometimes you stretch all the way to Nyanza, sometimes yeah. you're in uh, like Kipia. So like ensure that you don't on, only focus on a specific region. Yeah. Reach out to everyone, like ensure that even if you're testing uh, whether this thing will work, test with everyone. Like don't. Uh, focus on the small smaller region that you're in. Mm -hmm. So this thing of forgetting those other universities is not good. At least let them uh, also be included in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think for me, just to kind of uh, encapsulate what uh, Castro has said, it just boils down to one very simple term, and that's an all-inclusive approach. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do uh, within the digital skilling agenda, you have to make sure that it's all inclusive. Because um, we've been working over the last, like, let's say, year or so, we are working with government. I'm not at liberty to go into a lot of details, obviously, because it's still an engagement that's going on. And uh, there's still a goal that we are trying to achieve. But the whole thing that they, um, even when you talk to um, uh, the CS and PS for ICT, I think the thing that they're interested in more than anything is an all-inclusive approach. One that allows them to ensure that uh, they can train those who are at campus, those who are at TVETs, those who are at VTCs, those who are out of school, um, those who are doing businesses, MSMEs, farmers, and all of these different things. So you have to develop an all-inclusive digital skilling program that allows them to target all of these different areas. That's where you start from. And then now in terms of also, you know, kind of bringing the relevance to the market, which is also very important. Making sure that what you're training is relevant to the market. That's where now industry experts and professionals like Castro come in, because they might, they might go into that space, give you insight and knowledge on, first of all, what's happening in the market, then how you can be able to streamline it into the different training opportunities that we have, and even offer mentorship. You don't go anywhere in digital skills or in tech or in any career, if I'm being honest, without a guiding hand that allows you to kind of uh, make those mistakes and keep on building from what it is you are doing. So yeah, I think an all-inclusive approach, a digital skilling model that involves everybody, I'm talking about women and youth from marginalized communities, people living with disabilities, all those different uh, interest groups, you have to make sure that you account for them. That's how you make sure that government, and more specifically government and the private sector come in, yeah. Okay, so I think as we finalize, um, the thing that I wanted to ask you, uh, Castro and Ignatius, uh, being, being the ones that are actively participating in the tech space, compared to me, obviously, because of my program work, uh, program work activities, um, in your own experience, what are some of uh, the trends that we are going to be experiencing in the next five to 10 years or so? And how can we be able to better prepare these women and youth from a digital skilling point of view to at least contribute towards uh, that space as well? So maybe if I give uh, just a little then give it to uh, the expert here. Basically for me, uh, what I borrowed uh, along the journey is um, let me just give a, a give a, a nice gist on what just currently happened people are 
all of our uh, saying about uh, AI, AI is taking jobs. AI has come there to either take someone's job, but basically AI is not there to take someone's job. AI is there to more or less help you do well your job and AI is going to create jobs for those who know how to use it. Why am I bringing this? Within the tech, uh, the tech environment, uh, if you remain stagnant with the one weapon that you have, you can never uh, continue uh, within that journey, within that uh, realm. So it's good that you embrace uh, different sides. Uh, there's uh, an article I read some time back, which was really encouraging, whereby uh, there's an, uh, an, uh, an organization or a company, a, a Fortune 5 company, based in the US, that has taken advantage of uh, data that he has collected over the years. And it is using it to inform what people would want from time. So if we just put ourselves in our cocoon that, okay, I have this uh, short skill. I, ha I, I am a networking engineer. So let me remain at that level. You, you can never progress. So it's good that as tech comes, try to get more insights from it so that you can also go within that journey. That's personally what I can give mm. within that. So you're highlighting mm. AI. AI well, as, and as, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. How about you, Castro? What other, um, you know, trends within tech are you seeing and what does it mean skill-wise moving forward? Um, there are so many mm -hmm. and um, uh, English has, has mentioned some of them. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to AI, I think everyone right now is like excited, AI mm -hmm. is fascinating, everyone mm -hmm. is like, um, I want to use this, I think that everyone is talking about AI, AI. Yeah, yeah. And um, even, uh, let me just say this, I, I, the other day I showed my cousin, who happens to be my guardian, how to use a GPT. Mm. And then the next week, um, she, she didn't even know what I was speaking about. <laughs> so yeah, AI is here, but um, yeah, of course, not everyone will know what these things are. Like I said, there's a lot of uh, people out here who don't know these things, mm. but AI is here to stay. AI is here to help us do our work. Mm. Like I mentioned a while ago that um, the bot that we used to market, mm. Uh, it's doing the automation, of course. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was doing this manually, like we used to have a template, um, a, a, just a message template, mm -hmm. uh, where, remember, we are contacting software engineers and clients. We are trying to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we had a template where the bot picks and then mm -hmm. just sends a message. Mm -hmm. But then we were like, this is boring. Like, who would want to like listen to the same thing every now every now and then? Like, can can we customize it in a way so that at least it it sounds interesting and uh, our, our our listeners can resonate with us? Mm -hmm. So what we did, we integrated uh, OpenAI uh, API API mm -hmm. um, within the bot, mm -hmm. and right now the bot can sent you a message. Of course, it's the same customized message, mm -hmm. but now we gave it some instructions to pr okay. Before I go even there, yeah. most people out here know ChatGPT, the ChatGPT that yeah, they yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that is what most people interact with. Yeah. But its AI capabilities go beyond um, just interacting with it on the user interface where you just ask something and then it responds. Yeah, yeah. So for developers, you have the API and many other capabilities that you can integrate within your maybe software products or whatever ideas you have that you want to implement. Yeah. So. OpenAI key, what it does is it assists you to like customize messages, like the messages that we are sending. Mm. Because initially we used to say, hi, um, Castro. Mm. It's just a template. Hi, Castro. Uh, we saw that you're interested in working as a software engineer. Mm. You can get jobs in this platform that we have, and that, that is all. But now with AI, um, it gets to... Like initially, actually, let me go back again. We used to send the same template, like one template to whether you are a software engineer or a, or a client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right now with AI, we can uh, classify whether this message is sent by um, a client yeah. or a software engineer who is looking for work. Yeah. So after that, now it, it goes ahead. And then if you're a client, you are given a specific template that fits a client. Yeah. And then if you are a software engineer, it gives you, remember this is happening in the back end. It's yeah. something that you can see. So it gives you a, tem a template that fits a software engineer who is looking for work. Yeah. Now, if you are a software engineer, um, it praises what you had posted. 
You had posted, my name is Castro, I'm looking for a software engineering, uh, software engineering role. Okay. My skill sets, uh, maybe React.js, Next.js, um, maybe Angular, okay. by, uh, Python, Django, Flask. Okay. So it picks all that and then it puts them down and now it goes to our site. That is LD Talent okay. and then it searches for all those skills. Mm -hmm. And then it praises you first, it praises you. Hi, Castro, we saw that you're an amazing engineer mm -hmm. who can do this and that. You see, when you receive that, you're going to be like, wow. Yeah. So, someone, customized so someone knows I'm an amazing mm -hmm. engineer, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to, hi, Castro, you are an, uh, if you're looking for work, you can, no. Mm -hmm. So AI is, is assisting in many ways, yeah, instead yeah. of what people are assuming of, like, uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to, like, um, take, take our jobs. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, sometimes we'll, we'll when I'm coding, um, mostly as an engineer, you cannot know everything. And this is something that someone will even tell you that if you're an engineer, you can't come to your computer and then start coding from nowhere. You have yeah. to Google and solve problems. The mm. work of an engineer is to solve problems. Solve problems yeah. Complex problems, mm. simple problems, but you have to solve uh, problems. And mm. to solve those problems, you have to search the problems online. Mm. See how you can implement code that exists out there to fit what you are building. Yeah. yeah. So AI is here with us. Instead of going to Google and searching for yeah, something and about. trying to see Stack Overflow, what is here? Um, is this code going to work here? Mm -hmm. Is this bug going to be sorted out mm -hmm. by this code? No, for me, I normally go to ChatGPT and then mm. I, I normally say that uh, I'm good with prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is when you ask AI something mm -hmm. and then it responds and then you keep on, it's like communicating mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. with someone. On, yeah. yeah, you keep starting with it. Hey, no, this is not what I needed. Can you customize this to fit? Can you do this? I want this code to do this and mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I normally say I'm good with prompt, prompt engineering because I can use AI to do my project until it's complete. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. so. Most people who don't understand what is happening is they will say AI is here to pick our jobs, uh, to take away our jobs, but AI is not here to take away our jobs. Yeah. It's here to assist us. Yeah. And even if it takes our jobs, as an IT person, you have to keep on learning. Yeah. There are yeah. a lot of things that you're going to get out here. Yeah. And then again, to most platforms that you're interacting with right now, um, whether it's a web application or a mobile application, um, I think most of them have been, have been integrated with AI. And you guys normally, I, I heard um, Ignatius mention Netflix. These are all platforms that have been integrated with, the, with AI. Uh, platforms like even Facebook, Instagram, like everything, nearly everything has been integrated with AI. It's only that people don't understand that they're interacting with it or it's here with us. You see, even Google, uh, the, 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 just the platform itself, like all these things have AI in, in, in them. And um, when it comes to the education sector, like, um, there's, there are some platforms where you realize, okay, you won't see it, but it's an it's an e-learning platform, let's say like Coursera. Like these platforms already have AI with them, it, within them, like they have, they have already been integrated with AI. And that's why you see like some things are, are, are being like accessed with more efficiency. Yeah. Like you don't have to struggle. Sometimes you get recommended some of the movies that you might like because mm. of the previous history that it has mm. from what, like it's collecting your data, analyzing it, and then giving you recommendations based mm. on what you like. Mm. Um, when it comes to healthcare, the same, I think AI is, everywhere right now. Mm. I'm sure um, we might not be, okay, I'm aware that we might not be like at that point in life where we will have AI integrated across everything, but at mm. least we are somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, the next thing I might mention, um, it's uh, more on VR and uh, on and AR, that is augmented, uh, augmented reality and yeah. virtual reality. Yeah. And uh, this is something that, um, it's it's actually when 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 I was learning on Microsoft Learn, I used to I used to watch a video of someone having a meeting like you're in you're in the US and you're having a meeting um, in China, but you're you're virtually there but not physically there. And that is the help of um, virtual reality. So virtual reality is something that I can say it's an emerging trend. Um, it's not yet there as well, but it shall get there at some point in in, time, in life or in time. And then we have um, augmented uh, reality where uh, you may you, you play games like you're immersed in in, uh, in a simulated environment where you are playing a game and you feel like you are there already. Mm -hmm. So like it's something that is amazing and I feel like um, 
these things, they're here with us and we cannot uh, ignore them. Now, um, the next thing I can say, it's an emerging trend, uh, is um, more on, let me say, let me say cloud computing. Mm -hmm. uh, because a, a few years ago, like I said, I didn't know what cloud computing was. Um, at least it's something I heard from class, mm -hmm. but I couldn't tell which platforms uh, mm -hmm. can uh, accommodate language. cloud computing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's something that, um, it's it's gaining traction right now, yeah. Mm. And most platforms cannot run without cloud computing, yeah. Because if you decide to do an on premises like um, just deployment, what happens when there's fire or when like things fail within that premises? So, cloud computing you cannot ignore it, it's an emerging trend, yeah. And, and even would they even consider it imagine because that's where we are now yeah, and, uh, exactly. and so we are just we, we we've left the space where we are developing platforms mm -hmm. to store them on FTP servers mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because the physical environment the physical wear and tear stuff of whatever environment you are using mm -hmm. should not interfere access to your platform. Mm -hmm. So I think even Nigi, some of the platforms you've worked on, like the training management system, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all of them, these are things that uh, you're working towards moving them to the cloud space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, at the moment, uh, maybe just to give a short, uh, just a gist on it. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we are running them on uh, premise servers, mm -hmm. and we are seeing there's a lot of uh, challenges with them. In mm -hmm. fact, now that we are trans, we are. Transitioning, transitioning to a different uh, physical office. If it was in cloud, we wouldn't have uh, faced a lot of challenges, just mm. people accessing it qu quite easily. Mm. And also, as uh, Castro has said, issues to do with power, security, mm. issues to do with uh, maintenance. Mm -hmm. So you see, when it's on the cloud, you take all that so risk, you leave, you leave all that risk to there the cloud uh, provider and you're good to go your clients can access your platforms mm -hmm. anywhere so actually uh, it's a very nice technology if well used uh, uh, will uh, reduce a lot of um, mm. uh, challenges that we, we we used to have before yeah. 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 and even for me from my end i think what i'm most excited about is augmented reality mm -hmm. and more specifically um, apple's literation of what it can be able to do mm -hmm. uh, i think there's a device they're releasing mm -hmm. uh, Probably early next year, mm -hmm. where um, they, they worked on uh, they worked on these augmented reality glasses, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, specifically implementing the spatial computing space, which is basically a midpoint between virtual and uh, virtual and augmented reality. From the point of view of you can have basically the user interface. Mm integrate itself into your own space. Oh, mm. Is it the yeah. mixed reality the, the, kind of Yeah, tech? the mixed reality type ah. of thing. So I'm really waiting for that. It's around 500K Castro, so saving has to Box. start. But uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a full pro book. But I think what I love about its, its, its capabilities is that uh, you know it's not just on gaming and film alone. There's so mm. many different things that it can be able to do, uh, specifically on the productivity side. Mm. And I think that's a space, you guys being developers, I know that's a space that you'll start developing programs and yeah. uh, solutions for it. It's a bit expensive, but the, the whole thing is that, um, and this happens with all forms of technology, mm. I think it starts at that high level and then they start looking at, okay, how can we get it to the common user, which is very, very important. So just to make sure we we tie down this perspective, we've talked of artificial intelligence, uh, something that's coming in, you've mm. talked, uh, talked of augmented. AR, VR. Uh, AR and VR. In terms of skills, I know you guys have talked about machine learning and how that's very, very important because some of these things are made possible by uh, at least that level of application. And uh, yeah, any other skills that maybe you are looking at? I know we've, we've exhausted on technology a little bit, but apart from machine learning, what skills are you looking at as a must-haves mm. going into the next? So while still on... Uh AR and VR, I mm -hmm. forgot something. Mm -hmm. um, a while ago, a friend of mine w wanted to purchase some uh, some glasses online. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. Just um, for, for their own maybe eyes. But now what I realize is uh, with the augmented reality, mm -hmm. th there are some sites which already have these um, implemented. Yeah. And um, what they were doing is um, you get on the site and then 
it, it uses uh, augmented reality to scan your face, mm. and then it gives you a recommendation of glasses that can fit mm. your frames, you see, and, the frames oh. and everything. Mm -hmm. And then it puts your face on, on the screen and the glasses that can fit you. And um, the other thing, I think this is something I saw on LinkedIn and it was very, very interesting. So you see, like sometimes um, someone might faint and you don't know like which is the next action to take and you're with that person. Mm. So someone was using some um, just VR uh, gears mm. to see how to like um, the, the best procedures, medical procedures to do. Mm. Like it shows you this is, it even goes beyond. It shows you there's something here that is not happening, right? Can you yeah. press or do yeah. something? Oh. That, now that is how VR has been applied in uh, healthcare mm. sector. Mm. And um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is cybersecurity. And with cybersecurity, this is something that I don't, I don't think cybersecurity will ever be uh, go extinct because yeah, no, this all, all these systems need cybersecurity. Like there are so many cyber threats. Mm -hmm. And the more technology keeps advancing, the more the cyber threats keep uh, advancing. So it's, uh, even with cloud computing, like uh, Ignatius has mentioned, like on premises, you're not sure how secure it is. Yeah. But now with platforms like, uh, let's say Azure, mm -hmm. like it's already secured mm -hmm. within itself to the point that it's it's the moment there's a cyber threat definitely it will signal you like the, something is not happening right yeah. now that is the work of cyber security mm -hmm. and um even the sites that we are building web applications whether they're bank related or any other um uh any other activity you want to do with your websites or web applications you have to ensure that they're cyber uh, secured mm -hmm. you don't always planning to access your database yeah. you see and then um the other item that i want to talk about is iot yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, maybe Tom, you can you can mention yeah, something. Yeah, because for me, I, I think the whole um, and this, this this is just building on your premise that, that there are skills in this uh, in this society now that are never going to go. They're never going to go uh, extinct. And the idea behind that is, for example, IoT. Mm -hmm. uh, we are moving towards a space where devices and devices and related software need to communicate with each yeah. other. So that's never going to stop mm. because as long as we have these small ecosystems, even within our own, uh, in, you know, within our own individuals, you want to make sure that your phone is consistently communicating with your watch or, or, or your, your tablet and all of that. And even outside that, even in a farm, for example, you want to make sure that uh, you have an ecosystem that allows, you know, different devices, your sprinklers, your, your, your fertilizing uh, fertilizing devices and so on and so forth. So you have to create an environment where they're communicating and sharing data on, okay, if this happens, if X, Y, and Z uh, uh, appears, then this is what needs to be done. So I think that's that's a space that's also going to be here for a very long, long time. And if you can have engineers and, and developers alike start working on even how to, you know, create cheaper sensors and, and again, develop programs within uh, that space that can allow even the common 190 to use some of these things, then it's going to be there for a very, very long time. IoT and IOE, especially on, in agriculture, yeah, that's that's not going anywhere anytime soon. And, yeah. uh, and, and the good thing is, if these things already exist in uh, cloud computing platforms. Like yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. they've already been deployed there. Whether mm -hmm. it's machine models, we have them on platforms like Azure. Okay, I keep saying Azure because um, I'm a land no, student ambassador program, and that is the only thing that I was given for free yeah, by yeah. Microsoft. <laughs> so these platforms already have these things integrated: machine yeah. learning models, uh, AI, AI, and everything. AI, they already IoT. there. IoT. Mm -hmm. Everything is there. Um, the other thing that uh, I, I think Ignisha has mentioned is on analysis and uh, data science. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is a skill that um, it's needed right now because by the yeah. time you reach to AI, you have to start down there from well, the mathematics, start, yeah. analysis, data science and stuff like that. And you need to generate insights from this data to assist AI, make decisions and everything, mm -hmm. or even make um, just business wise decisions before you make yeah bef before you make a choice on something that you you are planning on doing, or even fo focusing on how the future would be like. Yeah. Um, Another skill or an emerging trend that I, I would like to mention is uh, on blockchain. Oh. Mm -hmm. blockchain. Blockchain, that is, mm -hmm. we cannot uh, ignore the fact that we have blockchain. Mm -hmm. And mostly people know blockchain uh, in terms of cryptocurrencies, but there's more to blockchain than just cryptocurrencies. And I know someone might be asking, um, how does it work? Like, what I can say is blockchain is from 
Tom to Castro. There is no, there is no like um, a middle, middle party, person, yeah, someone yeah. who will listen to whatever we are we are talking about. Mm -hmm. It's more on the smart contracts. Like it starts from you, it gets to Castro, and that's it. You see, I don't want to put more politics to this. <laughs> I don't want to mention any bank or put idea, politics yeah. to this, but yeah, that is yeah. blockchain. Uh, and the last bit I can say, um, quantum computing. Mm -hmm. And uh, with quantum co computing, I think now this is, uh, okay, it's, it might not be here. I think right now it's in it, uh, uh, just the, the initial stages of gaining traction, but it shall, like just the same way we had chat GPT launch yeah, and yeah. everything. So I'm very sure in the near future, we shall have uh, computers that um, are running on quantum computing and yeah. normal, not the normal classical computers. Yeah. Because we- Castro, mm -hmm. if uh, maybe I just interrupt you, mm -hmm. You bringing up uh, quantum computing, it's a term that has been there for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've heard of it mm -hmm. back in campus. And uh, do you think, and can you say that uh, at the moment there is an actual quantum computer? Yeah, I can say it, it's in its testing or development stages. Mm -hmm. But like I said, it, I think I had, okay, not I had because I was not born then, mm -hmm. but I've, I normally like reading or listening to podcasts. Like, mm -hmm. so, um, Something I saw that even in the 1980s, guys were still uh, talking about AI and quantum computing. Like this is not something that has happened just the other day. So I think just like AI is here with us, I'm sure at some point in life and time we shall have it. And with the good thing with quantum computing is it can solve very complex problems that uh, a normal classical computer cannot solve. Yeah. Like it can solve very like Ma just big masses of data, or oh, sorry, mm -hmm. problems, like a problem that a normal computer could have maybe crushed. Mm -hmm. So with quantum computing and then its speed and power, like I feel like, um, yeah, tech is headed mm -hmm. uh, in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, these things exist and there's actually, they're actually even organizations, mm -hmm. now just to build on what Castro is saying, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. organizations that are already using, because I think the whole idea behind quantum computing mm -hmm. is having um, a device or an ecosystem mm. that can work with extremely large data sets mm. to be able to provide real time and very quick solutions. Yeah. And so those things are there. Mm -hmm. And the only issue that we are facing, I think, for developing countries, maybe outside developing countries, mm -hmm. is, is the fact that, um, you know, those are things that require a lot of consistent power. Mm -hmm. The issue is the, <laughs> the issues to do with power, not necessarily even having it being, you know, implemented or developed within this space. It's the amount of power that it takes. Mm -hmm. But they're there, I think, uh, as Castro has said, can go to YouTube and, and, and see different uh, iterations of how they work and, and basically what it, what it needs to be able to develop. But the one thing I'll say for a fact is that it's, it's not a computer seated somewhere in a small room doing all of this. It's, it's, it's an entire ecosystem. And, and uh, yeah, mo mainly what it's being used for now, it's just dealing with those large sets, those, those million, five, 10 million different entries and figuring out in real time how that translates to specific outputs that maybe some of these big service providers uh, can be able to use. And uh, Tom, as uh, maybe we wind up, uh, we've talked about so many uh, emerging tech mm -hmm. uh, and I have a feeling that our listeners may, uh, may in some way be uh, uh, kind of suffering, uh, uh, dissecting all these jargons. I think we should come up with other uh, segments just to at least uh, break down each and every one, mm -hmm. each, each and every tech uh, so that they can have uh, a good uh, understanding of them. And I think uh, Mr. Castro here can really help us with that. And from time to time, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it, and, and I think that's the whole thing. Um, uh, as we finish, the, the, the intention is not to bombard the audience with as many technical terms as we can. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that they need to be in the atmosphere. Yes. So that people who are interested and people who are willing to invest time on them can be able to start looking at what roadmaps exist for me to be able to become a software developer, uh, for me to become an expert maybe in machine learning. So it's that space in tech where, um, you know, if it's not handled well enough, it seems as if you're bragging. Mm. But uh, the intention of bringing all of these terms here was just to make sure that we start, you know, mm. we start... Uh, we ignite it a little bit. Yeah, then. curating mm. that level of curiosity and, and, and yeah. And so I think um, 
uh, I'm hoping that as we conclude, um, we've uh, touched on every, everything that we need to. Again, I must thank uh, Castro here for creating time and Ignatius as well. Uh, these are very, very busy people. And so when um, uh, I think I was telling one of our colleagues uh, just a few days ago, we were actually planning to do this podcast last year. Mm -hmm. So if you are to put everything into consideration, it has taken us eight months to actually <laughs> have this city. Yeah. But, but again, it's because, uh, you know, so many different busy schedules you've heard from Castro and what, you, what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Ignatius has also shared on my end also with things to do with the program, program coordination. It's always very, very difficult. But I like Ignatius's idea. Um, I think creating a platform where this can always be addressed, um, yeah, especially from a level of uh, expertise and be done more consistently, I think, is what the podcast is trying to achieve in a nutshell. But I know those are some of the things we'll get to explore. But for now, mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much for tuning in to uh, the podcast. It's been an amazing time, and I'm sure you'll have an amazing time listening to us too. And for more information or more content uh, that you're interested in watching within our channels, follow us on uh, Acquit, uh, X Lead or Lead Series. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more content as we move towards the end of the year. Thank you very much. Goodbye.